News now from eCancer TV about an exciting meeting in Rome. Uh, this is concentrating on cancer in older patients. Antonella Pinto from uh, Naples, you are one of the steering committee on this, and I know one of the things you're interested in is Burkitt's lymphoma. I always thought yeah. Burkitt's was about young people. Uh, that's true. Uh, Burkitt is a typical lymphoma of young people. Problem is that up to a few years ago, the idea that an elderly patient may develop Burkitt's lymphoma was not universally accepted. The reality is that although, although Burkitt's lymphoma is a rare tumor, it is about 2% of an Hodgkin lymphoma, about one third of patients developing the sporadic form, not the African form of Burkitt's lymphoma. That means in the Western world, uh, so this fraction is composed by individuals aged more than 60 years. Now the and, exciting yeah. thing about the African one is that you could avoid the infection, but you yeah. can't avoid the sporadic no, version. No, no, no. But the treatment is, uh, how, what is the normal treatment for, for uh, the young patients? We are, I mean, we, were, we are very successful in treating and curing this lymphoma in, the, in childhood and young adolescents with very intensive chemotherapy regimes, which are uh, based on the rapid recycling of drugs and on a very aggressive CNS-directed treatment because this lymphoma typically involves the central nervous system. Problem is that this regime, or those regimes, they're different, more than one, are maybe too toxic to be applied as they are in an individual aged more than 65 years. So the frontier in this field is to find out a way to treat elderly patients with the same intensity, but without losing them because of too much toxicity. Now, just give me the ballpark figures. How many patients, older patients, are there with Burkitt's? Uh, one, more or less some 31 to 32 percent of patients developing sporadic Burkitt lymphoma in the Western world, I mean states and Europe, are older than 65 years. So it, so it is it's something not irrelevant. It needs to be addressed, though, if you have a yes, patient. Yes, it's yes. A, I mean, treatment of Burkitt lymphoma in elderly adults is still an unmet medical need because if you simply treat those patients by applying the same protocols you use for young adolescents, uh, you may have response in some patients, but there is a serious risk of losing the others because of toxicity. This is one yes. point. And the second point is that even though you succeed in treating uh, properly elderly patients, the fraction of long survivors is lower, and this probably be due to a different biology of disease er when this type of lymphoma arises in a patient who is older than 65. So, so with the young patient's uh, treatment, you could win the battle but lose the that's war. That's it, that's it, exactly. What are you going to tell us about this then at, in Rome? Uh, I, the, 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 meet, the meeting in Rome will address the several sides of approaching to the elderly patient with cancer. Uh, it will be divided into sections to address problems for each specific type of cancer, let's say hematology, solid tumors, and so on. And we will try to de develop, if possible, some new ideas and guidelines to, to improve the um, quality of treatments we are able to deliver to the patients. So it will be a very exciting occasion doing that. Yes, uh, though your personal interest has been in Burkitt's, of course, that's yeah. just a small part of this uh, yeah. cancer, of uh, course. blood cancers in elderly patients meeting. But um, what do you think doctors going to this meeting in Rome will be able to learn ab about treating older patients as compared with younger patients? Uh, first, they will learn, even though most of our colleagues do appreciate that uh, already, that if you got an older patient with cancer and he's a fit patient, in other words, he has no too serious comorbidity, you have to treat uh, as close as possible to what you would do in a young patient because there was this old tendency once to say, okay, he's old, and so we'll try just to preserve his quality of life. Problem is that quality of life in elderly cancer patient is directly related to the tumor. So we have to treat to find a way to treat adequately the tumor if you want to improve the quality of life of patients. So we have to, to learn how to do this and how to improve our skills in doing that. So what you are saying is that a patient may look pretty bad, but if you treat that tumor, this patient, although chronologically maybe older, yeah. could end up being quite a fit person. That's true. The chronological age is no longer a criteria for deciding whether or not 
uh, to apply an effective treatment to a patient. So you have to take into account at least it stratify the patients according to chronological age, comorbidity, fitness and so on. So there is a subset of patients which are defined as the frail patients which they really can't stand any active therapy and for those patients something new has been needs to be developed but the others uh, should be treated as close as possible to um, the, to the same kind of strategy that we use in young patients. How do you advise clinicians to pick out those patients, the ones who are going to be biologically quite young uh, and fit, from those who are indeed frail and, you, very, and that you do that, need to take care of? That's a very good point and a very complicated issue. Uh, and there, are, then, and there are guidelines which are being made exactly uh, addressed in this point. There are scales which are able to select the patients which can probably stand a more aggressive treatment. There are several types of uh, geriatric scales, we call that, and geriatric assessment uh, scores that can be used. There are several. So the idea is if you have to face an older patient with whatever cancer, uh, first one has to see whether his chronological age is really um, a problem to his treatment or not. And you can use this geriatric assessment to pick up the patients which will behave probably as younger than they age. And of course, a learning about how to do that, how to pick out those patients, yeah. must essentially be part of the meeting in Rome. Of course, in, absolutely, in exactly, definitely, definitely. Mm. Well, thank you very much for being with us. It all sounds very exciting and I'm looking forward to it enormously and hope to um, hear you talk about it more in March. So okay. um, thank you very much indeed for, for joining us, Antonello, and um, we'll um, pick up later on. Thanks for being okay. on Okay, thank you TV. for your time. Thank you, everybody.